Okay, in a previous video, we derived a formula for the surface area of a parametrized surface. And then we also had another video where we did an example calculating a surface area for a parametrized surface. So there's some notion that is really very connected to that process of finding a surface area of a parametrized surface, and that's called the scalar surface integral. So, but before we look at that, let's just recall this area of a parametrized surface. So let's say S is smoothly parametrized by this vector function R of U V, where U V runs over this um, region D, which is in the plane. Then the area of that surface is given by the double integral over D of the magnitude of the cross product of the partial derivative of R with respect to U and R with respect to V. And then you're just doing DA. Okay, so then we can make the scalar surface integral a really related concept, and we could derive this from the bottom, but the derivation is almost exactly the same as what we did when we derived this formula, except we've just got a function um, in front that we're going to evaluate at this surface. So I'll let you guys uh, look back at that derivation and see where this function would fit in. If you have notes from that derivation, all it really takes to make this formula is just stick an f in a couple of places. Okay, so the scalar surface integral of a function f of x, y, z on a surface s, where s is still smoothly parametrized by r, and so our notation over here is this double integral over s of f d capital S, and here we're abusing notation. This s down here is the specific surface that we're integrating over, and then this d capital S here means surface integral in general. So that's given by F evaluated at the x, y, z output of our parametrized function and then multiplied by this magnitude of R u cross R v. So all it really involves is putting this extra function in here. So once you've got the parameterization of the surface, you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so for our example, I want to look at this one. So it'll be the surface integral of y plus z, where our surface is the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 4 in the first octant. So what I mean by that is all the x, y, and z values are positive. And then we also want it below the z equals 3 plane. And I should say greater than, or sorry, less than or equal to the z equals 3 plane. So let's get an idea for what this looks like. So here we've got our um, x-axis coming out like this, our y-axis coming out like that, and our z-axis going up like this. And so the cylinder in the first octant is going to look like this. So notice it's a cylinder with radius 2. So it'll go through the x-axis at 2. It'll go through the y-axis at positive 2. And then it'll make a quarter of a circle like this. Great. And then it'll go straight up like that. And then give us that picture right there. Okay, and then we should draw some lines coming out from the z-axis to show that we have something like that. So that's what we have. It's just maybe a quarter of a cylinder, a cylinder that's been quartered. And now this point right here is uh, z equals 3. So now, how are we going to parametrize this thing? Well, there's actually a bunch of possibilities. You could just solve for y. That would be a possibility. But uh, maybe what I want to do is be inspired by cylindrical coordinates. So our cylindrical coordinates are in the following... So our cylindrical coordinates are the following change of coordinates. So we have x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta. So it's really like polar coordinates for x and y. And then we have z equals z. Okay, so we want to do that, except we don't want to evaluate except we don't want to allow all r values. Notice we want to be fixed on this cylinder of radius 2, which means what we have to do is set r equal to 2 for all of these. So that's going to give us x equals 2 cosine theta, 
uh, y equals 2 sine theta, and then z equals z. So that's going to stick us on the cylinder of radius 2. Now let's see what our bounds need to be. So notice that we need to have theta go between 0 and pi over 2. That's going to keep us in this first octant. Notice that theta equals 0 comes out the positive x-axis. Theta equals pi over 2 goes out the positive y-axis. And then furthermore, the z values are going to go between 0 and 3. The first octant means we're bigger than or equal to 0, and then, well, we're given that it has to be less than or equal to 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and transpose these down here. So we have r of theta z. That's going to be what parameterizes our surface. And then we have uh, 2 cos theta, 2 sine theta, and then z. And here we should say uh, theta comma z comes from this area in the plane which is described by 0 comma pi over 2. That interval cross the interval 0 comma 3. So what that means is my theta values are coming from that first interval. My z values are coming from that second interval. So this is something good to hang on to. This is our uh, parameterization of this surface. Um, now, look at what we need. We're going to need r of u cross r of v, the magnitude of that. And so since we've got a little bit of room left, let's go ahead and calculate that if we can. So notice r of theta, in other words, the partial derivative of all of these parts with respect to theta, that's going to give us minus 2 sine theta, uh, 2 cosine theta, and 0. Good. And then uh, notice r uh, sub z is going to give us 0, 0, 1. Okay, we're good to go. So uh, now notice the cross product of these two, r theta cross r z, will be gotten um, by using our determinant of that matrix uh, tool. So we'll have uh, minus 2 sine theta here, 2 uh, cosine theta here, and then 0. And here we have 0, 0, 1. Okay, so let's look at this cross product. So to get the first entry, we're across the first row with the first column. And notice that's going to give us uh, 2 cosine theta in that first entry. And then in the second entry, uh, we'll cross the second row uh, with the first column. And that's going to give us 2 sine theta. And then um, we'll get 0 in the third entry. So we've got 2 cosine theta, 2 sine theta, and 0 for that cross product. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this part of the board, bring it to the top, and then continue on this calculation. Okay, now that we've done all the parts, we're ready to plug this into our formula for the scalar surface integral. So, let's see what we get. We need the double integral of f, but notice f is y plus z, so we need to take the y component of this plus the z component of this. That'll be 2 sine theta plus z. Great. And then we need to have the magnitude of r theta cross r z, but we calculated that cross product on the last board. That's minus 2 cosine theta, 2 sine theta, 0. So it's that vector. And then we need to do dA over this region, but notice this is just a rectangular region, so this is easy. We, can, uh, we might as well do d theta dz like that, which makes our 0 to pi over 2 happen on the inside and our 0 to 3 happen on the outside. Okay, so now let's go ahead and calculate the magnitude of this vector. So that's actually pretty easy to do because these are well behaved. That's going to be 4 cosine squared theta plus 4 sine squared theta, which is going to be the square root of 4, which is 2. So we get 2 for that. I'll go ahead and bring that out front. That's going to give us twice the integral from 0 to 3, 0 to pi halves of 2 sine theta plus z, and then we have d theta dz. So now we can just do uh, like a calculus one type integral on this. We're basically home free at this point. So that's going to give us 2, and then doing the inner integral first will leave us with a 0 to 3 in the outer integral. So that with respect to theta is going to be uh, minus 2 cosine theta plus 
theta times z, and then we need to evaluate this from theta equals zero to theta equals pi halves, and then do a z integral on the outside. Okay, so let's see, this is gonna be twice, the integral from zero to three. If we plug pi over two into this, we're gonna get pi over two times z. Notice cosine of pi over two is zero. And then if we plug zero into this, we'll have cosine of zero, which is one, but we have a minus sign in there, so that'll be plus two. And then we have dz. Okay, so taking the antiderivative of that, we'll have two, and then this is gonna be pi over four z squared plus two z. Now we need to evaluate that from zero to three. So in the end, we're going to have um, nine pi over uh, two plus uh, 12. And that's the final answer.